Good evening, and welcome to tonight's prayer cast. I, one of my favorite Bible stories of all times comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, the 14th chapter, beginning with the 16th verse. And in it, Jesus tells the parable of the great banquet. Jesus replied, A certain man hosted a large dinner and invited many people. When it was time for the dinner to begin, he sent his servant to tell the invited guests, Come, the dinner is now ready. One by one, they all began to make excuses. The first one told him, I bought a farm and must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I bought five teams of oxen and I'm going to check on them. Please excuse me. Another said, I just got married, so I can't come. When he returned, the servant reported these excuses to the master. The master of the house became angry and said to, the, to his servant, Go quickly to the city streets, the busy ones and the side streets, and bring the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. The servant said, Master, your instructions have been followed, and there is still room. The master said to the servant, Go to the highways and back alleys and urge people to come in so that my house will be filled. I tell you, not one of those who are invited will taste my dinner. But here's what I think. I don't think that the master really means that last line. I think that the master really did want his neighbors and friends to come because who doesn't want their friends to come to a party when they invite them? We all want that. So I think he really did enjoy having all these new people come to his home. And I think it was a really good thing for all of them. But I think he wanted his friends to come too. And I think maybe that's how God feels too. And, uh, and Frederick Beekner, in his little book, Wishful Thinking, says it beautifully in the section entitled Grace. After centuries of handling and mishandling, most religious words have become so shop-worn, nobody's much interested anymore. Not so with grace, for some reason. Mysteriously, even derivatives like gracious and graceful still have some of the bloom left. Grace is something you can never get, but can only be given. There's no way to earn it or deserve it or bring it about any more than you can deserve the taste of raspberries and cream or earn good looks or bring about your own birth. A good sleep is grace, especially these days, isn't it? And so are good dreams. Amen to that. Most tears are grace. The smell of rain is grace. Somebody loving you is grace. Loving somebody is grace. Have you ever tried to love somebody? A crucial eccentricity of the Christian faith is the assertion that people are saved by grace. There's nothing you have to do. There's nothing you have to do. There's nothing you have to do. The grace of God means something like this. Here is your life. You might never have been, but you are, because the party wouldn't have been complete without you. Here is the world. Beautiful and terrible things will happen. Don't be afraid. I am with you. Nothing can ever separate us. It's for you I created the universe. I love you. There's only one catch. Like any other gift, the gift of grace can be yours only if you'll reach out and take it. Maybe being able to reach out and take it is a gift too. May God's grace be with you this night. May God's peace surround you. And may you have the grace of good rest and the grace of beautiful dreams. Peace be with you. Amen.